tell you, today we're in for a very special treat because we have Jim Ramsey. Now, he is an Acts 2 person, and we are an Acts 2 church. What better combination could we have? Jim Ramsey is the director of missions for the Central Baptist Association. I'm getting that right. Okay. And I understand you make a trip every year to Brazil? Seven Boy, I better get on the road quick because I don't have much time. I got to keep going and going and going. Listen, Jim, we are so glad to have you here. I know you have a terrific message for us, and we just can't wait to be blessed. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to come and speak to you today. Uh, I am the director of missions for the Central Baptist Association. I was elected. June the 15th, so I am the new Director of Missions for our Central Baptist Association. I've been going around week to week visiting all the churches in our association. We have 19, two in Van Buren County and 17 in Warren County right now. We want to grow to 25. Uh, that's just a number we've set as a goal. But uh, in going to the different churches, one of the main things I've been trying to get across is the fact that it's a time of reconciliation. There have been years in the past where different churches in our association have not gotten along very well, not supported each other, not worked with each other, and that's wrong because we're all about God's kingdom. It's not about the church's kingdom. We're about being under the guidance of the Holy Spirit and not about guidance under a man. So we need to get our churches together, working together, and, and have reconciliation among those who have problems between themselves and so that's what I've been going around trying to talk about. You know, I, uh, when I was thinking while going and brother was talking, uh, uh, there was a young pastor who once uh, went to preach his first revival. And they, they had a hotel convention room uh, rented, and he went in, he was all by himself. Nobody there. And all of a sudden, in the back, walks this farmer in his coverall, and he sits down in the back. And so young uh, pastor, thinking about, well, do I need to do something or not, he walked to the back and he asked the farmer. He said, well, do I need to go ahead and preach or not? And the farmer told him, he said, well, son, I'm just a farmer. I don't know a whole lot. But I do know this. When I load up the wagon and I take it out to feed the cows, even if it's one cow, I feed it. So the preacher gets back up in the pulpit and, boy, he goes to preaching and he don't stop. About two hours later, he stops, and he, you know, and he goes back, and he asks the old farmer sitting in the back, and he said, how'd I do? And the old farmer said, well, he said, I'm just a farmer. I don't know a whole lot. But he said, when I load up that wagon, and I take it out to feed them cows, if there's only one cow, I don't unload the whole wagon. <laughs> so we'll try to be that way, but, uh, you know, I saw a sign on church that says, be the change you wish to see in the world. Be the change that you wish to see in the world. It's amazing what one person can do as far as changing many people. And uh, when we go to Brazil, we spend the day going door to door to door. I mean, we start on a street, and we go door to door to door, and we go into the people's homes, and we share the gospel message with them. And once they accept Christ, we ask them if we can come back and start doing Bible studies with them. And uh, during the week, we'll go back at, at times they have available and have them invite their neighbors and do Bible study. And, and so we feel like that when we leave, we've not only had somebody make a decision for Christ, and we've dumped them, here you are, but we're going back and get them grounded and trying to get them involved with the church there. And I think that's the way we need to be here. But the problem is here, we have a hard time getting people to go out into the homes door to door because of the rejection that we feel like or know that we're going to get. The problem is we don't put enough faith in the Holy Spirit. The fact is, is if God sends us to a door, then God is going to be working inside that door. We may not get an answer that day, but we've planted a seed. So what I want us to look at today is in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 through 21. I title this, If any man be in Christ, because things happen when a man is in Christ. I, myself, in my past, I had many things that I wasn't very proud of. And, and, and uh, uh, I, I just, I wanted so much for things to be different. And, and, and they, they wouldn't be. I, I accepted Christ at a young age, but I got way away from Christ. 
And, and, and in my life, I, I, let, I let alcohol take over my life. I, I, I actually worship the bottle for a while. And, and I like to lose my family, my home, everything I had. Woke up in a mud puddle, face down, said, Lord, if you'll get me out of this. You know, a lot of us make those kind of promises. And, you know, and we don't do a good job keeping them. But, but I was at a point where God said, you're my child, and I'm going to clean you up, and I'm going to pick you up, and I'm going to use you. And he did. And he has. And in mighty ways. And I appreciate God for that and love him for that because he loved me when I wasn't deserving of his love. But, but, but the Bible says in this uh, verse, starting in 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now, then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this morning. And all, those who are here, Father, who have come to, to worship you, to bring sacrifice of self. And we thank you for that, Father. And we ask today that as we go into this service, that we relinquish this service to the Holy Spirit, Father. It may not be me, it may not be anyone else, but it be you that leads this service and what takes place in it. So, Father, we thank you for your word, and we ask, Father, that your word today would just explode for us. It would open up in our hearts the things that, that we need to be doing as Christians and, and, and how we have, have the opportunity to do that. So, Father, we praise you and thank you and ask for your guidance. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We become new creatures. Like I said, I, I, there was a change in my life that, that I never expected. I, 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 I had gotten so far away from God that I said, well, there's not going to be a way for me to get back to God. I've just messed up big time. I have messed up, and, and my life is ruined. I'm losing my family. I'm losing my home. I'm losing everything I've got. But I found out that my God's a greater God than that, you know. I, I put him in a box, but God's not in a box. God can make anything God wants to happen. He can make it happen. And we've got to realize that and, and, and learn that and put our faith in that. Because, you see, when we ask Christ to come into our heart, we, uh, for the most part, most people say, well, Lord, I want to be saved. I want to make sure I'm going to heaven. And, and that's all we worry about. You know, Lord, I want to be saved. But what we've got to remember is, is that it's not only about salvation, it's not about being saved, but it's also about making Jesus Christ Lord in our life. And there's so many people who don't want to do that. We like running things ourselves. We like, I like that old country song, I can handle this job all by myself. Well, that's the way most of us are. We want to do things our way and by ourselves instead of letting God lead us through the Holy Spirit and what he wants us to do. And so when we do really make Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior, then, then we get rid of old things in our life. Old things are done away with. Self-reliance, boy, you know, that's what I'm talking about. When we say, I can do this, I found out I couldn't do a lot of things without Christ in my life. And, 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 and disobedience to God, we, we can't help. We can't go through the day without being disobedient to God. But, but the thing about it is, when we make Jesus Christ our Lord, it becomes less and less and less. And God is making us more like he wants us to be so he can use us the way he wants to use us. And, and there's addiction to the world. People are addicted to the world, things of the world. You know, we're worried about buildings. A lot of places, and I've been in this uh, where people, I don't care about, about God's kingdom. I'm building my kingdom. I want this named after me. I want my plaque on the wall with my name on it, you know. And, and they want to build something for themselves instead of working for Christ and letting a world that's lost and dying and going to hell know there's a Christ out there that died on a cross for them. And we get hung up into that. And, and not only that, but there's a, there's, we be, we're enemies to each other. Not only to God before that time, because when we don't have Christ in our heart, we're enemies to God. 
and then we're also enemies to each other because we care more about self than we do our brother, and we'll be caring more about our brother. And I'm sorry to say this is in churches. Churches that are supposed to be God's people gathering together to sacrifice to God and to get their, I like to say, get their battery charged so we can go out into the world and show the world what Christ is. And, and the churches themselves are fighting amongst each other. And that's wrong because then the people say, why do I want that? I got that anyway. Raised in Christ. Be rid of old things when we get raised in Christ. In other words, to be raised in Christ to me means this. First off, it means that we got to die to self. You know, I was in the military, and in the military during Vietnam time, they told you the best way for you to get through this is just say, I'm dead. Just say, I'm dead. It's over. I'm done. It's dead. I'm dead. And you'd get through it better. Because those who were worried about dying actually got themselves in trouble. So what we have to do in this world today, especially with Christ as our Lord and Savior, is say, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm not alive anymore, but I live in Christ, and Christ lives in me. And when we do that, we don't have to fear anything. You know, the worst that can happen to me is to wake up in heaven. The worst. And then we have to renew our mind on things above. If we renew our mind on things above, we can't think so much about things below. And we need to have our mind focused on heavenly things. And then we need to live in the fruit of the Spirit. We need to be praying every day, God, give me more of the fruit of the Spirit. Because if we die to self, and if we renew our mind and we live in the Spirit, there is no circumstance this world can put us in that we can't get through. Those three things. Well, the next thing we do is when we become a man in Christ, we have a gift. In verse 18, it talks about that gift. We have a ministry. A ministry is where, where, where you're helping. You're helping. And, and the ministry we have is for God to people. Now, God don't need us, but thank goodness God wants us to participate and allow us to get the blessing from that participation. Why do we go to Brazil every year? I go to Brazil because I love the Brazilian people. I love the Brazilian culture. When I go there, I, I feel like I'm one of them because they live like, I mean, they are a sociable people. And I'm a people person. My wife gets mad at me all the time. She'll send me a grocery store for something. They get back here, I'm cooking dinner. And an hour later, I might get back. Well, I ran into so-and-so, and then I ran into so-and-so. And before it's over, I've stood there and talked to now for about three hours. You know, but, 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 but the Brazilian people are like that. At night, we go home, we go in the door to lock them, and, they, and down there, they come out on a corner and eat and, and, and talk and have a wonderful time together. And when they worship, boy, when they go to worship, <laughs> they start with prayer, and they pray, and they pray, and they pray, and then they sing, and then they pray some more, and pray some more, and then they sing some more. And then you get up and preach, and after about 30 minutes, you say, we're going to have an invitation. They say, where's the rest of the message? <laughs> And then they pray some more and they sing some more. And they ain't ready to go home yet. They love gathering together to worship. And our people, we can't get them sometimes sitting out. You know? And, and so our ministry is for God and it's to people. It's not for us. And then there's that ministry is a ministry of reconciliation. You know, reconciliation kind of has a double meaning. And, and one of those things is, is, is it's like a bank account. No, and, and, and you're balanced in your bank account and, and then what happened to us is in the garden our, our bank account got out of balance and we owed a debt but it's a debt we can't pay because we're spiritually bankrupt but thank goodness God had a plan for us he laid Jesus down a cross for us to reconcile us back into to good standing with God so that we could have a home in heaven and so that ministry of reconciliation is to make sure that gets to everyone because, you see, if you don't have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're an enemy with God, and you don't mix. You don't mix with God's people. You don't mix with God. You're out there in the world, and you are led by Satan because you only have one other choice. That's God or Satan. And, and, and so we are supposed to reconcile people, help them find that reconciliation, Jesus Christ. 
so that they can be reconciled to God, so that they can look forward and have the living hope of the home in heaven. Well, we reconcile people to God, but you know, I think that goes a step further for us. I think we have the job not only of reconciling people to God, but I think it's very important for us that we learn to reconcile one another with each other. You know, there are people walking around in this world like they've got a chip on their shoulder and just daring you to knock it off. And, and we need to help them understand that there's no need for that chip. I'm not out for you. I'm not out to hurt you. We may disagree on some things, but Paul said we can disagree on many things other than Christ crucified. Yeah, so if we have a few differences, so what? We've got to love each other. Jesus died for everybody. He loved everybody. And he wants us to love each other. God says we can't get along with each other, then we can't get along with God. We can't forgive each other. How do we expect him to forgive us? I want to tell you something, folks. There are people in churches today who are brothers and sisters that because of something that happened in church will not speak to each other. That's wrong. We're not only family, we're family of God. And I don't care what we differ in, if we, if we believe Jesus Christ is, is the Lord, then we got to get along. We got to say it's okay that we disagree, but we still got to work for the kingdom of God. And the more we can do together, the more we can accomplish. And so we become ministers of reconciliation. And, 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 and then I think that the third thing we find in these pieces of Scripture, in verse 19, it says that we have a new commitment. Well, that new commitment is the word of reconciliation. And what I find is the word of reconciliation is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ died for all who will believe. All who will believe. The problem is, is there are those who think, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. No, the world's been too good to us sometimes. Satan's got us tricked. He's got us believing, i got everything I need right here. You know? And what we tend to find out in a time of trouble is, we really don't. When you look at a child of yours in a hospital bed sick, and you know how they're going to get well. But when you look at a family member that's been in an accident, and they're trying to recover, you don't know. Or when you, when you feel like that you've lost everything, you've lost your job, you don't have any income, and your family's sitting there with nothing to eat. You know, God provides. And I'll tell you, because of my free life, before Christ really became my Lord, I know those things. And I can share them with you and tell you, Jesus Christ died for all of us. And that God reconciled the world unto himself through Jesus Christ and the shadow of the cross. And what we've got to do is quit looking at each other like, well, they're from Bridges of Hope and they're from wherever. They don't, they don't get along. They don't work well together. What we've got to start looking at each other about is this, is the fact that each of us is children of God. We've got to look at each other and everybody else in the world, even those lost, dying, going to hell because they don't know Jesus Christ. We've got to start looking at them through the shadow of the cross. Because Jesus loved them enough to die for them just like he loved us enough to die for us. And we've got to carry that message to them and keep carrying it and keep carrying it. Some put the seed, some water, some weed, and some get to participate in the harvest. And then we have a new job in verse 20. Let me go back to that reconciliation thing. You know, have you ever tried to mix oil and water? It doesn't mix, does it? That's part of reconciliation, you know? And, and when you try to mix oil and water, it's kind of like salad dressing, you know? When you shake it up and you get it all mixed up for a minute or so, when you pour it in your salad, and we set it back down, will it separate? Well, you know, mayonnaise is the same thing, isn't it? Water and oil. Why does it stay together? It has an emulsifier. An emulsifier is egg. You know what? For Christians, when we all get shook up and we're together and everything's good, and after a little while we begin to go back to our own homes and go back to our own place, get back into our own situation, 
Well, there's an emulsifier there for Christian. And that emulsifier is Jesus Christ. And through him, everything can bloom and come together. Everything. And, and so we are, in, you know, and we are we, well, we not only to have that reconciliation, but we're also we're, we're to be ambassadors. You know, an ambassador is a person who represents their country to another country. You know, anywhere in the world, the United States has got an ambassador. If you can get to the ambassador's place, you're safe. Everything's good. You know? We are ambassadors. The problem is, some of us don't realize what country you represent. It's not this country. We're, we're just on a journey through this country for a short time. The country we represent is heaven. And we're the only heaven some of this world's ever going to see. We need to watch how we live because we represent God. That's our home. If we're Christian. Heaven's our home. And that's where we represent for the world. And, and so, we, you know, a, a, a representative represents a nation. We represent him. And the thing that happens is we become an ambassador for that. Representing God to man. Now, if we don't live our life the way we ought to live it, and we go out through the day not caring, and, and, and we, we tell everybody, well, I'm a Christian, and I go to church on Sunday, and then we live our life all week like it's for the devil, then those people see that. And if they see that, and they see that we can't get along even in the church or between the churches, then, then they, the first thing they say when you, why well, do you need to come visit us at church? They say, why do I want to come there? I got what's there here. Folks, we got to watch out. We're an ambassador for Christ, not for any one particular church. It's God's kingdom. It's not ours. And we need to work together in every way we can to make sure that those that are lost and dying out there know there's a heaven. And it's for them if they want to accept what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. We've got to be salt and light. We've got to be the salt that, that helps preserve and helps add flavor to the gospel message. You know, you go and tell somebody you're going to hell, <laughs> they cut you off right away. We've got to add some flavor to it and let it persevere and keep coming and keep coming in ways that, that they can't help but notice. <laughs> We've got to be light. I don't care how dark it gets. You know, when I lived, I lived in the city in Nashville for a lot of years, and we lived about a block off one of the main highways, and it was like daytime all the time. We had to put stuff over the windows to sleep at night, uh, and horns and cars and everything going on. It was terrible. We moved up here, and we lived back out the dead end road back out in the country. <laughs> and the first thing we moved up that first night, I stepped out of the front porch there and, like, fell off. I told my wife, I said, it's dark here, <laughs> you know. And, and, and so when you're in a dark place, it's dark. But you have one speck of light, and it's amazing how much brighter that darkness comes. we got to be that speck of light. we got to be that speck of light. And we can be each and every one of them. And then lastly, we're made the righteousness of God. You see, you and I can never become righteous. We can't buy our way. We can't do enough good things. There is nothing you and I can do to make ourselves righteous except, except the gift that God gave us Jesus Christ. And when we do that, we must show the lost and dying world Jesus Christ. Not James, not anyone else. Jesus. And the other part of that is, when you receive God's righteousness, there should be a burden in your heart that is so unbearable that you can't sleep at night sometimes because of your loved ones and others that you know that do not know Jesus and knowing what they want to face in eternity. It needs to hurt. Bad enough, we'll get up out of our seats and we'll go down the road and we'll share Jesus Christ as all things as strong as we can. You know, ambassadors are something else. 
Have you ever? You know, I don't know how many of you remember the old Charlie's Angels. You know, them gals would do anything in the world Charlie told them to do. They never met Charlie. They didn't know him, didn't have any idea who he was. But he told them to do something, boy, they were on it. They give their everything to get it done, you know. And, and if they would, these three, if these gals would do that for this guy they don't know, then if we're ambassadors for Jesus Christ, how much more should we be willing to do, even though we may not know him personally as far as being there when he was here? But we know him because he's in our heart. And it's because our faith in him and that burden for those who are lost. That we're going to go there. That we're going to go to Brazil. That we're going to go down the street. That we're going to go to another state. That we're going to go with our family. That we're going to go wherever the Holy Spirit leads us, realizing that the Holy Spirit would not send you there if he hadn't already been preparing the ground. Today, I ask this question, are you in Christ? Have you just accepted his salvation or have you made him Lord in your life? Have you received the gift? Do you accept the commitment? Do you accept your new job? Not a lot of pay, but the benefits are divine. To say yes to any of these, you must first accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Today is the day of your salvation. If you've not accepted Jesus Christ, I would pray you not leave this building today without being saved. If you have, I pray that you'll ponder these things I spoke to you about today commitment, the job, the ministry, and that you would dedicate yourself to doing those things necessary for us to serve with Jesus Christ and his kingdom. As we stand, I think we will probably have music for somebody to sing. I don't know, brother, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Pat.